Hello, hello, hello. Happy 2017. It is a new year and that means some new changes. I got a new background music song for the sewing desk sit down and that's about all the changes. Also with the new year is the brand new seasonal sew wardrobe on the sew alongs and sewing contest Facebook group page. So it is going to be a lot of fun. The theme this time is deep stash. That means we need to sew eight garments from the deep stash. Patterns that we've maybe never used before, that we bought when we first started sewing, and preferably with all fabric from the stash. Which, you know, that's not gonna be a problem for me. Especially thanks to my grandma, grandmother, and my mother's stash of fabric and patterns. This is gonna be pretty simple to find fabric and patterns, I think, but it's gonna be complicated picking them. We have until April 30th to make eight garments with the deep stashed fabric and patterns. What's my first project? I'm working on Simplicity 7779. It is just a basic A-line skirt from 1968. Of course, I couldn't leave it basic. I couldn't leave it easy. I have picked this. It was more of a remnant, a scrap of fabric from, I know this is like a really small scrap, but it's bigger than this, obviously from my grandmother's stash and I can't decide which side of the fabric to use. I mean they're both they're both great. So I have decided to make it reversible. Why do I need a reversible A-line skirt? Why do I decided I need to make a reversible A-line skirt? Why do I like making everything so challenging on myself? I mean, I can't I just make a basic skirt just once, like just like the pattern, just easy side seam, back seam. That's not even hard, but I have to make it hard. So how am I even going to do that? Because it has a back center zip, so obviously that's not going to work reversible. The side seams, I can't get the geometric prints to match up because that's it was a scrap. What am I going to do about the darts? The waistband, I don't even have enough of the fabric to cut the waistband out of. So I have remedies for a few of those. I have this gray knit, but I don't think I'll use it because knit is stretchy, whereas this chambray is very, very woven. But this is kind of what I'm thinking. Obviously just a plain colored waistband from one of the colors in here. But then with the gray, which is really the reason I got this out, is I want to do a tuxedo stripe down the side seams. So it'll be kind of color, kind of color blocked. The print, tuxedo stripe, and then the print again. So you so it'll distract you from noticing that the shapes don't line up. Because so I don't even think they're going to line up. I don't think the colors are going to even be close. It's, it's just going to be obvious. So that's why I want the tuxedo stripe down the middle. Which I've kind of made for you to be able to see. In this very crude I don't draw drawing. So you can see the green is going to be the, actually the gray. And there's the side seam that it's going to be covering up right down the middle. There's a reason I sew and I don't sketch. But what about the center back zip? The darts... I don't know, I have no idea right now. I think I might play that one by ear. Maybe just make it a pleat or just a tuck because I want it to be a fitted waistband. So I don't want it to be elastic with a little bit of gathers, I don't think. Because I, I want it to be a very clean line, simple line skirt. So I'm thinking with an A-line skirt, the front and the back is pretty much identical. The pieces, pattern pieces. This is actually the front and this is the back. Really the only difference is the notches. And that the back has 5 eighths extra for the center back seam and it's not cut on the fold. So what I'm going to do is make the front piece the back. So the back is going to be smooth and I'm just going to take the dart shape. Oh, that doesn't show the dart shape. Well, the dart shape from the back pieces and put it onto the front pieces and front onto the back. And then with the back, which is now going to be the front, I'm going to make a button band. You're like, yeah, great, Jewel. Another drawing that's awful. So there's kind of the idea of what it's gonna look like. I know, I'm sorry, I am not an artist. So the button band down the middle, and there we go. But does the back, is that seam even gonna match up? So do I make the the button band be gray too, or is that gonna be weird with a gray stripe down the front? I feel like that might not work at all. So I might have to use bias binding, get this edge the center back edge, well, center front edge clean because I only have five eights here for the button band. So I have to use bias tape there. 
fold it under the 5 eighths, and this would be a clean edge because the bias binding would be underneath. And then I top stitch that down, and that's how much, that's how much the button and buttonhole is going to have to be on, is this just little tiny 5 eighths seam for it not to look weird. I think. What size of button is that going to be? A fourth of an inch? Because then if it's a fourth of an inch... Oh boy. Why did I why did I do this to myself? But I can't get the idea out of my head now. It might be a failure. I guess if it's a failure, I'll share it with you anyways. See, I just like challenging myself, which is kind of stupid. Because I'm always like, why did I challenge myself? So, you might be hearing about that great, exciting accomplishment, or probably worst failure. It could be a very bad failure. But maybe I have some extra room. Maybe I can make the skirt a little tighter or fit. Maybe I'd get that would give me some extra room. Hmm. And what about the hem? What about the hem? How am I going to do the hem? I've got to think this through. I just came up with this today. I've got more questions than I actually have answers right now, but this this is getting me excited. Like, I am ready to jump into this project now because I love figuring stuff out. And hopefully you notice this little bodice hanging here. This is Lisette. Simplicity 1419, our favorite dress pattern in this house. And this is for Hannah. Hannah, she lives in Peru, and she came up and she tried my cherry dress, and it fit just about perfect. She needed a little bit more room in the side seam, which was fine because I just brought the side seams to a 3 8 instead of a 5 8 so there she has some extra ease in there. And I also had to lengthen the skirt pieces by 7 inches. That's how much taller she is than I am, which was an easy fix because I just added it in there. It's just the beginning. Still got the facing, just had the, the collar uh, basted on. Got the sleeves to go, skirt to go. So this is one of my dresses for my friend in Peru that I talked about in episode five. And hopefully next episode, you'll see Hannah's Lisette dress finished. And maybe some of the questions I left unanswered on Simplicity 7779 answered. Maybe a good complete star on it. That would be nice. I would love that if I was at least started on it. I do not know when the next episode will be coming because my sewing time has will now be shrunk because the holiday's over. So hopefully it won't be too long, but sometimes life happens. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy sewing.